In this lecture, we're going to look at the muscles of the upper limb. Muscles of the arm that move the radius and ulna. Most muscles that move the forearm cause flexion and extension at the elbow. The biceps brachii, brachialis, and brachioradialis are flexors, so you're going to find them on the anterior part of the arm. The extensors are the triceps brachii and the anconius, uh, which is found around the elbow. Some muscles that move the forearm are involved in pronation and supination. The pronators are the pronator teres and the pronator quadratus. Only the supinator can supinate. You use the powerful action of the supinator when you twist a corkscrew or turn a screw with a screwdriver. Over here in this picture, we can see supination and pronation. Think of it this way. If you were to take a bowl of soup, you would hold your palm out. That would be supination and hold the soup in the palm of your hand. If you turn your hand over where you can see the back of your hand, that is pronation. I think of now my hand is prone to getting smacked by a ruler. Again, supination, you turn your hand over like you're holding a bowl of soup. Pronation is you're showing the back of your hand. And you can see here the pronator teres and the pronator quadratus muscles. When they contract, pronation happens. Here's a good view of the supinator. When it contracts, you're going to get supination. Let's take a look at some of these muscles. Here's the biceps brachii muscle, and that's going to cause flexion of the arm and forearm, and it supinates. The brachialis also causes flexion of the forearm. The brachioradialis flexes the forearm as well. And the pronator teres and pronator quadratus pronates the forearm and wrist as we saw in the previous slide. And again, here is the supinator, and of course the supinator supinates. Mentioned earlier, the anconius muscle, and right here is the anconius muscle, and that's going to, again, help extend the arm. The triceps brachii, you have the long head, which extends the arm and the forearm, and then the lateral and medial head extends the forearm. And the enconius, as I mentioned before, extends the forearm. Muscles of the forearm that move the wrist, hand, thumb, and fingers. Muscles in this group are known as extrinsic muscles of the hand because they originate outside the hand and insert within it. Based on location and function, these muscles are divided into anterior and posterior compartment groups. The tendons of these muscles that continue into the hand are held close to the bone by a strong fascial band called a retinacula. And here's an example of a retinacula, the flexor retinacula. Here's the flexor carpi radialis. It's going to flex the wrist, and it'll radial deviate the wrist as well. Palmaris longus flexes the wrist, and surprisingly, it's missing in about 16% of people. I do not have a palmaris longus. And you're probably wondering to yourself, do I have a palmaris longus? Well, here's how you can check. Put your thumb and little finger together and if you see this tendon popping out right in the middle of the the uh, forearm at the wrist you have a palmaris longus if it doesn't it's most likely absent now it's not a problem because the palmaris longus 
is pretty small muscle. It looks big in the picture, but in real life, it's a fairly weak muscle. As a matter of fact, if you need a tendon graft and they need to take a tendon from somewhere, a lot of times they'll take the palmaris longus out and use that tendon because its removal or any damage to the palmaris longus is not going to affect grip strength. And then we have the flexor carpi ulnaris, which flexes the wrist and ulnar deviates the wrist. And a good way to remember this group, and I'm going to throw pronator teres in there as well, is pass, fail, pass, fail. Pass for pronator teres, fail for flexor carpi radialis, pass for palmaris longus, and fail for flexor carpi ulnaris. Going a bit deeper, we have the flexor digitorum superficialis, and that flexes the wrist and digits. Underneath that, we have the flexor digitorum profundus. Again, profundus or profound means deep. And so this is going to be your most deep flexor muscle. Again, it's going to flex the wrist and also the fingers, the digits. Also notice that flexor digitorum superficialis is going to stop a bit shorter. And it's going to split. And then the flexor digitorum profundus continues on through that split to the tips of the fingers. Then on the posterior view of the arm, we have the extensor carpi ulnaris which extends the wrist, the extensor digitorum, which extends the wrist and the fingers, the digits, the extensor carpi radialis longus extends the wrist, as well as the extensor carpi radialis brevis also extends the wrist. And again, if it's on the ulnar side, you'll also get some ulnar deviation. If it's on the radius side, you'll also get some radial deviation. And what I mean by that is the hand will bend toward the radius or toward the ulna. And we go a little bit deeper. We can see the extensor digiti minimi. That's going to extend the wrist and the little finger. So one way to remember that is if you've ever seen the movie Austin Powers, there's Mini-me, extending his little finger. And so that's how you can remember the extensor digiti minimi. Then we have the extensor digitorum, which extends the wrist and the digits. The abductor pollicis longus abducts the thumb. The extensor pollicis brevis extends the thumb. And the extensor pollicis longus also extends the thumb. And how you can remember these is think of a brevis sandwich because you have longus, brevis, longus. And it's going to be abductor or abductor, extensor, extensor. So abductor, extensor, extensor, longus, brevis, longus. That's the best way to try to memorize these muscles. Now muscles of the palm that move the digits, intrinsic muscles of the hand. Intrinsic muscles of the hand produce weak but precise movements. Intrinsic muscles are split into three groups, thenar muscles, hypothenar muscles, and intermediate. The thenar muscles plus the adductor pollicis form the thenar eminence. And that's that round bump of muscle by your thumb on your palm. And then the hypothenar muscles act on the little finger and form hypothenar eminence. And that's the bump, uh, again, on your palm, but by your little finger. Movement of the thumb are defined in different planes compared to other digits because the thumb is positioned at a right angle 
to other digits. And so here you can see this, this swelling by the thumb. Um, again, we're going to call that the thenar eminence. The muscles of the thenar eminence consist of four muscles, the abductor pollicis brevis, the adductor pollicis, flexor pollicis brevis, and the opponens pollicis. Now what opponens refers to is opposition. That's the ability to touch your little finger with your thumb. That's called opposition. And sometimes they say, what is it that separates us from the animals? And I know what you're thinking. Yes, we're not afraid of vacuum cleaners. But besides that, it's the fact that we have opposable thumbs. The way our thumb is situated, we are able to move that thumb to the little finger. And that's one of the things that helps us to use tools. And then on this side, we have the hypothenar eminence. And so the hypothenar musculature consists of the abductor digiti minimi, the flexor digiti minimi brevis, and the opponent's digiti minimi.